Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week involves a bit of engineering as I explore gears. Let's check it out. A gear is a special type of wheel which has teeth called cogs which go around the outside of it. Usually, the cogs of a gear will be interlocking so that the two gears turn together. Sometimes, the cogs in a gear will fit into gaps in a chain that connects two gears and this allows the mechanism to work. Gears make tasks easier for humans and for motors. If you have ever looked closely at a bicycle, you will have seen gears in action. Gears can also be found in wind-up toys, wind turbines, cars, cranes, analog watches, all sorts of different things. This week, I'm going to be making some simple gears using sweets and exploring how gears are so versatile. For this task, you will need plastic lids of different sizes, a hot glue gun, a scrap piece of paper or cardboard to catch any glue drippings, hard sweets like gumdrops, paper fasteners, another sheet of cardboard for attaching your gears to, a pair of scissors and a marker pen. Make sure that an adult assists you with this activity since you need the hot glue gun and sharp scissors. The first thing I'm going to do is place sweets all the way around the outside edge of one of my plastic lids, leaving a small gap between each sweet. Now that's done, I'm going to use my marker pen to put a dot on the cup to represent every second sweet on the way around the cup. And then I'm going to remove every sweet which does not have a dot next to it. Now, using my hot glue gun, I'm going to put some glue on the back of each sweet and stick it onto the cup so that the line on the cup is in the middle of the sweet. I'm going to leave that lid to the side just now so the glue has a chance to harden and I'm going to do the exact same process again with my slightly bigger lid. So I'm going to start by putting sweets around the entire outside edge. This time, because I'm using a black cup, I'm going to mark every second sweet using a dot of Tipex rather than my marker pen. Again, I'm going to remove every sweet which does not have a dot at it. And then I'm going to use a hot glue gun to stick down the sweets next to each Tipex mark on the inside of the lid. The great thing about using a hot glue gun is it does not take the glue long to harden and dry, so it won't be long after setting up my second cup before I will be able to carry on with the demonstration. Now that the glue has hardened on both of my cups, it is time to turn this into a set of gears. The first thing I'm going to do is, using my scissors, put a hole through the middle of the white cup and through the cardboard. Then I'm going to put a paper fastener through this hole and fold the legs round making sure that the cup is attached to the cardboard but is still able to spin. Once that's done, I'm going to position the black cup so that one of its cogs is directly in between two of the cogs of the white cup, with the end of the cog almost touching the white cup. Then I'm going to use the scissors again, put a hole through the middle of the black cup and the cardboard, put through a paper fastener, fold the legs round and make sure the black cup is attached but also is still able to move. Now that my gears are set up, it's time to test if they actually work. I'm going to hold on to the raised part on the inside of the white cup and start to turn it. Hopefully, the cogs of the white cup will connect with the cogs in the black cup and both of my cups will be turning together. You'll notice that when I'm turning the white lid, the black lid is also turning. My gears are not moving perfectly smoothly though. The teeth aren't quite meshing up because the two cups are very similar in size. This means sometimes the sweets are meeting on the ends and having to force their way around. This is also causing problems by making holes in the cardboard. So it's not perfect gearing, but it is allowing them both to move together. Now what I'm going to do is, using my marker pen, put a line from the edge of the white cup into the middle, and then with the tip X, I'm going to follow that line from the edge of the black cup into the middle of it. Now I'm going to turn the gears again, and we're going to observe which one turns faster.
you'll have noticed that the white cup, the smaller of the two, was getting back to that starting point faster than the black cup. But why was this happening? Smaller gears always turn faster than bigger gears because they have less cogs that they need to turn through. Take for example two gears that are attached, one with 10 cogs and one with 5 cogs. By the time the smaller of the two gears has done a complete turn, it has worked through 5 cogs. But the gear with 10 cogs will also have only worked through 5 cogs, so it will only have done a half turn. When riding a bicycle, a cyclist pushes on pedals at the front to turn a gear. This gear moves a chain connected to a gear at the back, and this is what allows the back wheel to spin. If the size of the gear at the front and back of the bike are the same, this means that one rotation of the pedals will equal one spin of the back wheel. It used to be with bicycles that the back wheel would only spin as quickly as the cyclists could move their legs. However, bikes now come with a range of gear options, meaning this is no longer the case. You can make the back wheel spin more often by going into a smaller gear at the back of the bike because as we've seen, smaller gears spin faster than bigger gears. When the bike is set up that one rotation of the pedals equals more than one rotation of the back wheel, the cyclist needs to work much harder to be able to keep that back wheel spinning. This is of great benefit though when going downhill because you have the advantage of the slope to help you. However, it is not so good when you are going uphill. So if you want to build up speed, it is best to use a big gear at the front of the bike and a small gear at the back of the bike. However, if you are going uphill, you want to be spinning a small gear at the front of the bike and a big gear at the back of the bike, because this means you will be able to go uphill with a lot less effort than if you were in the bigger gear at the front or smaller gears at the back. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstrations I've done so far, here to my STEM career interviews and here to my robot review videos. This has been STEM with Mr. N, exploring gears.